So I guess we got elected to close the show here. Hopefully you guys still have some energy out there. I'll try to keep it short and hopefully keep you guys engaged. My name is Rob Timms. I'm the development team manager here at ProPlanner. Uh, this is Arul Ganesan. He was the project development lead on this specific project. And I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit today about quality and risk analysis in ProPlanner, Assembly Planner. Um, basically, how do we help you make sure with our software that the products that come off your line are the products that you're intending to build and that they meet the uh, requirements and specifications. For several years at ProPlanner, we've supported FDA and control plans, uh, which are a widely accepted industry standard uh, way, uh, systematic way to analyze risks and uh, failure potential. Um, in both your product design and your process, as well as come up with a way to mitigate and prevent those failures from happening. Uh, we support the AIG FMEA standard. Uh, we've supported that for quite some time. That's, a, again, a widely accepted standard published by the Automotive Industry Action Group uh, to help <clears throat> streamline communications in the supply chain. So if you have suppliers or if you're a vendor, um, you know, chances are that somebody you're working with may be using the standard. That's why we implement that. In 2019, in collaboration with the German automotive group, BDA, AIG released the new standard. And that really gave us uh, kind of an action item that we needed to accomplish, but also an opportunity. So we support the AIG standards. It means we had to support the latest standard as well. But it also gave us a chance to take a step back and think about you know, what are the ways that we could change um, our quality analysis software and what we want that to look like in the future? Uh, so many of the reasons that you would perform FMEA in Pro Planner uh, in our, our new module would be the same way as you would perform in the older module, same reasons. Um, you can perform FMEAs and control plans. We supported all the AIG standards. Um, and then again, one of the core strengths of the assembly planner software is our integrated product and process database. So you're actually attaching your quality analysis studies to your product data, your process data, so that if you make changes to that data, if you move it around, say during a rebalance um, activity, your quality studies will move along with it, and then you can generate new documents. Uh, so like I said, uh, we got a chance to think about what is it that we want to do? How do we want to improve your experience um, in using the software and performing these analyses? So uh, a couple of the smaller items, we added uh, DFMEA support. So you can do design FMEAs in the software of the product. Uh, we added support for the latest AIAG template, as I mentioned. Um, we changed the editor because uh, when we got out into the industry, talked to, to people that were doing these studies, most people are familiar with you know, an Excel based editor, they're doing these in Excel. So we changed it to a more, um, more open, less hierarchical, less structured process. So it really can be as restrictive as you want it to be. Um, and the way, the way that we do that, when I say as restrictive as you want it to be, um, is we really wanted to enhance the flexibility and customizability, which will be a big, big focus once I get into the software and demonstrate this. Um, basically, we, you know, people do FMEAs, what we found everybody does them a little bit differently. So um, some people don't do FMEAs at all. Some people have a completely different way of doing this. So you can, you can customize um, in either a minor or a major way that you would do the studies inside our software. It's also important when you create these documents that you know how to that you can release revisions and also track the history of changes. So we wanted to uh, make that a focus. In addition, one of the pieces of feedback that we got is the users uh, wanted the ability to both view and edit more data in our software all at the same time. So that was a point of focus as well. And at the end of these studies, um, usually the outcome is some sort of a document or report. You have a, a stakeholder, whether it's, you know, an outside company or someone within your organization that you need to report to, you need to give them this document. And um, we wanted to really focus on, again, putting the power in your hands to control what those documents are gonna look like. Um, 
So basically you're, you're kind of editing in the report and you're reporting from the editor. Uh, we also use this as an opportunity to pilot a lot of these concepts um, as things that we were trying for the first time, maybe a new technology, um, but they could be extended to other places in our software. If you've used Assembly Planner much, you've seen you know, spreadsheets, you've seen the search control, you kind of understand how that goes. So. Um, now, I want to go ahead and jump into the software uh, with a little uh, focus on the new Okay, I think that's not my computer, thankfully. Yep. Uh, with, with some focus on the new AIG standard, but also understanding how these concepts could, could fit together to enable you to do basically whatever studies you need to do in this space. So the first thing you'll notice when you jump in is you're seeing colors in the spreadsheets. It's probably a new thing for, for a lot of you. Um, typically, you know, they, they kind of look more like this. Right. Um, and, and what we wanted to do here was in terms of customizability, we used, we used a concept which we came up with, which I'll call views and standards, basically. So we wanted to put in your hands the ability to create these views. And these views can be used both for editing your data and also for reporting your data, which is what I mean when I say, you know, what you see is what you get reporting. Um, so views are, are basically customizations upon the same data set. And then we have standards, which is what I mentioned, where you know if you don't do FMEA, you do something completely different. Um, we can build you a completely different standard. I'll just touch on that very briefly. If you see these two tabs up here, it's FMEAs. Um, we have control plans as well. Uh, basically, these these standards are built on the same uh, architecture, the same infrastructure. Um, with a minimum amount of uh, required fields that are in here. So it really is a blank slate. Even though we've built this to look like something that you are familiar with, uh, should be familiar with, or, or maybe become familiar with, um, the sky's kind of the limit with what you can do in here. <clears throat> so in order to allow you to build these views in a more rich way, um, we added a, a lot of additional possibilities for customization uh, in, inside the spreadsheet. Working wonderfully. The screen here. Um, pinned. All right. No luck with all. All right. So one thing that we added in here is the <clears throat> the ability to group your columns together. So that gives you these hierarchical column headers here. But in a customized view, um, you can also move those columns together. So if you want to move five, ten columns, um, if you want people to hide and show groups of columns, um, that that's in there. Uh, second thing that we added in here was um, a, a large extension of look and feel settings that you can implement. That's where the colors came from. So you can do that in column headers. You can do it inside the sheet. Um, and in addition to, those settings as a couple of additional Excel-like features, uh, we've also added um, customizable formulas that you can implement between fields in your sheet if you want to come up with a calculated field and conditional format. If you want to highlight something, um, you know, uh, specifically, um, some of you may be more familiar with the AIG FME 4th edition standard than the newer one. Um, so the RPN is a calculated field based on three other fields. You can see our formula right here. And you can also see that we have the conditional formatting for the values right here as well. All this is configurable. All of it is stored with the view rather than the field. So uh, again, kind of sky's the limit for what you want to do here. Uh, I'll close this down. 
just quickly show you that calculation working inside our system. Uh, so you can see here, we have our, our SOD calculations. And you can see that if I modify this value, my RPN over here is going to change and my color highlighting is going to highlight my row. Again, this is a property of the view. That field doesn't even exist in the VDA view, um, but it's calculated in your, in your V4 view. Uh, another uh, way in which these views can help you is in authoring data and potentially transitioning between new standards. So if you have, you know, if somebody is providing you with files, you have a format, they have a format. As long as your underlying data more or less means the same thing, um, you can also use these views to help you bring that data into the system. Uh, as an example, uh, we had a, a the sample that we set up here. So say we have a customer that's on the fourth edition, they want to move to the VDA edition. You simply bring the data in here, you paste in your fourth edition data. Switch to the VDA template and immediately you can see kind of the pieces of information that are missing here. So all you have to do is fill that in. And once you have that done, then you, you've effectively got got documents and capability to support both standards, report on both standards, save both standards in your system. Um, and let's say, you know, say you have uh, another, another way that you can use this also is reporting. So uh, we go here and maybe you have a customer that doesn't like the standard templates, you know, they wanna see something completely different. Uh, we threw this view together, it took maybe five minutes. So. Um, so once you're, you've created your document as you're authoring your document, as I said, this is something that's very important to track. Um, people want revisions, people want to know what's being changed. So we've added that capability in our system. Uh, you can manage your revisions right here at any point in time during your editing, you can capture revisions. Um, an, an additional feature that we've implemented in this part of the software, which is, is kind of re revolutionary, is the ability to get field level change tracking. So in addition to you being able to capture a revision and saying, hey, this is my document, it's ready for sending, this is what I want it to look like, it can go to the customer. Uh, every time somebody makes a change and saves the data, that is stored in the database. So you'll know who changed that, what changed, when it was changed. Um, and again, this is, a, this is a feature that we decided to pilot in this part of the software, but it's something that you know, people have been kind of wanting in other parts of the software for quite some time as well. <clears throat> so once you're, you have your data in, um, you want to get your data out, right? Uh, you're able to author this data in the system at, at any level. So you, as you see up here, um, we have our routings, we have our operations activities. You can author your PFMEA data um, at either at any level. Uh, we, we recommend activity because it gives you the greatest portability if you do a rebalance, right? You have your FMEA studies tied to the activity level that moves from one station to another. Um, your document needs to be updated for that. If you've mapped them at the activity level, your document update is essentially automatic. Um, but, you know, the document you need to generate is probably at a higher level station, you know, full product. Um, and we've added the capability for you to not only um, generate that report here, um, but also be able to author more of that data here. So you can see uh, under my routing here, I click this option to show child processes and it will be loading the FMEA data from all operations and activities in the system into this sheet right here. And those records are editable. Internet connection here is a little bit slow. So I apologize for that, but it will be coming. <clears throat> there you go. Um, so you can, you can see here, 
um, much more data in the sheet, right? And now that you have this data, you also need ways to maybe filter it down. Maybe you want to generate your FMEA for a specific model. Look at a specific station, specific operator, right? Um, if, if any of you have generated a, a work instruction report from our system, um, you're going to be familiar with this form that is coming up right here. It's our work instruction report filter form. So you can filter for specific date, unit, model, option, operator, workstation, um, any, any of that uh, can be filtered and applied then into the sheet. Um, additionally, uh, we are working right now on a heat map functionality, which will help you identify your problem rows. Um, and basically, uh, you can configure this to identify different levels of severity. And by clicking in your heat map, it will uh, filter down to those rows in the FMEA or your quality analysis document. So once you have your documents generated in our system, you want to get them out of the system. Um, and, and as I said, what we're targeting here is to be as what you see is what you get as possible. So you might create views, you might use those views for reporting only, you might never use them to edit your data. But when you generate a report out of the system, um, you should see what you're expecting to see based on what you have in the sheet. Uh, <clears throat> So here is, is a demo report. We have um, our header information for the FMEA, as well as the details. And you can see it essentially is just reflecting what's in your sheet. Uh, as another view, here is you know that other report with the other view we created. So again, it's just reproducing what you're seeing with a, a high level of fidelity. Um, and in addition to the revision functionality that we have added, uh, we've added the capacity to actually compare one revision to another, or you could compare, you know, one point in time to another to see what has changed. And so this is just a basic comparison report where, you know, I've removed a value, I've added a value in my sheet, and I've changed the value, and we highlight them in uh, red, red, yellow, and green. Um, and really, this is only the start of this development. Uh, like I said, we're using this to, to pilot a lot of concepts. Um, and we also want to get a lot of feedback. So our, our first goal here was to create a robust and flexible data model that can support your needs in this space. Um, and also create a rich and customizable authoring and reporting. And I think we've gone a long way towards doing that. Although uh, we want we want to get this in your hands, we want to get your feedback. We want you guys to be active stakeholders in what you want to see in this part of the software. Um, whether it's enhancements to the authoring experience, um, enhancements to the reporting, or you know additional analysis tools like the heat map that you'd like to see. Um, we're really hoping uh, to get feedback and get active participants as we as this uh, software continues to evolve. Thank you all. Anybody have any questions? All right, thanks.